Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you very much for finding time to visit my channel. Now, the Deputy President, Dr. William Samuel Ruto, is leaving the country on Sunday. He's honoring invitation, uh, according to the information that uh, they shared on their channel, is that the Deputy President is honoring uh, invitation by senior government officials and top policy institutes to share his thoughts on foreign policy, democracy, and governor, uh, governance. He is also going to share his thoughts on economic vision in Kenya and Africa. The Deputy President is visiting the US and the UK. And this tour is going to take 12 days. While in the US, uh, the Deputy President is going to meet uh, among uh, other institutions, uh, is going to meet officials of the State Department and the Pentagon as well as the US government National Security Council. He's also going to meet Kenyans in the diaspora and the deputy will speak at the Cambridge Endowment for International Peace, the Center for Strategic and International Studies and at the University of Arizona's Washington Entrepreneurship Hub. After that, the deputy president is headed to London where he will meet senior UK government officials, visit the National Counterterrorism Center and speak at both the Commonwealth Secretariat and at the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Now, that is what we have been given. In this video, I want to take a moment and explain why this tour has come at the right time for His Excellency the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. And I'm not going to take much time. Now, my number one reason why I feel this invitation has come at the best time for William Samoy Ruto is that it is going to give William Samoy Ruto time to cool off the temperatures, the political temperatures in Kenya. The Deputy President has been in active campaigns for four years and what has happened in the week that is ending somehow even gave him more heat his boss the president of Kenya just three days ago endorsed the deputy president's closest nemesis and political opponent, Raila Amolo Odinga. And the week that is just ending saw several political parties hold their national delegates conference meetings where they endorsed Raila Amolo Odinga as their pres uh, presidential candidate. And so the deputy president has been a busy man trying to fight Azimio trying to answer his boss. It is time for the Deputy President to take a break and take advantage of this invitation. He must retreat. He must re-strategize. So that when he comes back, the Deputy President is going to be a, re a rejuvenated man. And so, this break is very important for him. Let him relax a bit. Our deputy president has traversed this country trying to fight big wars. And so I feel that it came at the right time for him. Let him go and strategize how to come back and face his boss, how to come back and face all these political parties that are supporting Raila Amolo Odinga. He can also take advantage of this to ensure that while he is away, there are several 
Allah is campaigning for him. Remember there has been this notion that William Samoy Ruto is in charge of his campaigns so much that when he's not there, you don't feel the UDA party, you don't feel the Kenya moja. And so while he's away, he should make sure that the, uh, the allies that are going to be left behind, if uh, people like Rigade Gashagwa are going to be left behind, let them keep on with that heat so that it is not said that when William is not there, the campaigns stop. Another thing that he can do while he's away, he can create another while you are away Baba. You remember when, I think it was in 2017 or so, when Raila went to the US and took some time. Uh, he stayed there for some time and when he came back, there was this slogan, Baba, where you are away and they were reporting to uh, Raila Muludinga what happened in his absence. So William Ruto can take advantage of this so that when he comes back, his allies will be telling him, his foot soldiers, when you are away, this happened, when you are away, this happened. He can take advantage of this. The last point of this is that he can choreograph this journey in such a way that when he's coming back, his supporters should throng Mombasa Road so that when he lands in, 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 in JKIA, they should meet him and escort him to the CBD in style, the way the, the, the world was done to Raila Molodinga. So he can take advantage of this tour to give us another earthquake bigger than that one that they gave us with Musalam Davadi. Number two, William Ruto is meeting several dignitaries as has been explained because this is an invitation we were told uh, that is coming from top policy institutes and government officials. He's going to share his thoughts on foreign policy, democracy and uh, um, governance. And so William Ruto must take advantage of this to talk about, to defend his bottom-up economic model. Because uh, it is said that he's going to share his economic vision in Kenya and for Africa. And so William Ruto has gotten an opportunity to explain, to rise up to the stature of a man who understands what he's talking about. He's been talking about this bottom up, telling his people to toy up a chini alafuju. Now he's going to defend it before the international community. And so I believe our deputy president is a man who is very sharp. He should take this uh, this moment, explain why he believes he's the right man to take Kenya to the next level economically. Coupled with this point is an argument that our deputy president lacks what we call uh, the international community cloud. There has been this argument that when you rate him with Raila Molodinga, Raila Molodinga scores high. And so let him take this moment and explain very eloquently like he always does his understanding about the international relations, the uh, international, you know, foreign policy. Let him talk about democracy. If he does this well, he's going to score. This moment is also going to give Dr. William Samoy Ruto a chance to meet his sponsors, well-wishers, and those who want to be part of his campaign, at least financially speaking. Back at home, there have been allegations about William Ruto. Very many people, his opponents, claim that he looted the public coffers and that is the reason why he has a lot of money to maintain his campaigns. He's campaigned for four good years. And so William Ruto should take advantage of this and ensure 
or show people that some of the money that he's campaigning with actually come from well wishers. When he meets them, I believe in any campaign, any presidential candidate, meet people who are who have got interest. Remember, politics worldwide is about interest. And so there are people who are interested to understand who is William Ruto. And that's why they're even calling him to talk about democracy. Because the international community are so much interested in what you understand by democracy, human rights, how you will relate to them. And that is that, of course, informs the decision to talk about foreign policy. And so he should take this advantage and show people that he has friends abroad, friends who are willing to donate money, the campaign money, so that when he comes back, at least, remember he has been explaining that part of his money comes from his chicken farm. Now when he comes back, I expect him to at least now brag that his friends, organizations and institutions who support his bid to become the president really pumped in money. So that at least this notion of William Ruto being, you know, corrupt can at least subside. Remember William Ruto also has there is a case that of late has been trending and it has taken headlines. It's been uh, trending that William Ruto has a case in The Hague that his case actually did not end. And so very many people have argued that perhaps the international community might not want even to be near him. Some uh, The international community, the US and the Britain, have always made it clear that when you are corrupt, when you have been indicted uh, in a court of justice, they block you. They uh, declare you persona non grata and you cannot touch their soil. And so with this kind of invitation, this kind of accolade, William Ruto has shown his political nemesis, his supporters who are perhaps were becoming nervous that our deputy president is not in good terms with the international community, he now gives them confidence that, look, I have been invited by the US and the, 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 the UK. Uh, it is believed that the UK and the US can manipulate, you know, cases in The Hague and all that. And so even his sponsors are going to have more confidence in him. When they pump in money, they know, yes, this guy, it is like it has been somehow, and I'm saying somehow, exonerated. So that it is like the international community will let the case takes its course and the politics takes its course. Even back at home, no one can argue again that, you know, this man has a case to answer and therefore we should even try to block him not to ascend to the presidency. William Ruto can also take this opportunity to amend his relationship that very many people think has been sour, has not been proper. He's going to meet senior government officials, those who sometimes determine who becomes the president. Remember the world over. All the presidents in Africa have got their support base with the international community. Trust me, if the international community do not want you, you can never be on that seat. Otherwise, it will you will have a lot of problems. They can unseat you. William Ruto is going to have an opportunity to give a speech and to address uh, you know, the Commonwealth. This is going to be a moment for him to prove himself, to prove to his supporters, and even to disapprove his political opponents. He is also going to meet his supporters. Remember, the on 9th August of this year, the Kenyan constitution has allowed that 
we have the diaspora, the Kenyans in the diaspora will also vote. And so William Ruto is going to uh, have an opportunity to convince those who are still are undecided that he's the best man. Kenyans who are still undecided and they're living abroad, he is going to take this opportunity to convince them why he believes he's the right man to take over from Uhuru uh, Mugai Kenyatta. He's also going to meet the UDA supporters who are going to be very happy to meet him. Remember the Kenyans in abroad uh, follow perhaps what is happening online on TV and all that. But when they have a feel, when they are uh, they meet uh, William Ruto one on one, I believe they are going to ask him questions about his position, about the Hague, about his policies, land, everything. And William Ruto, I want to repeat, is very eloquent. He knows how to articulate his case, how to articulate his points. And so I believe that William Samoy Ruto could have gotten a better time. This invitation could have come at a better time like this. It is going to give him time to relax. It is going to answer several questions. Do you remember when he talked about Congo and he said that the larger, uh, uh, how big Congo as a country is, they don't have even a single cow. And the way he was saying it, it was sort of derogatory because he was saying it that that these people who play Lingala music, these people, it, it was kind of, he was kind of talking of the so-called Congolese musicians. They're just good in music, but they don't have even a single cow. This did not aga well. In fact, the ambassador uh, of Congo to Kenya complained and the opponents of William Ruto, the political opponents, took advantage of this and they, they, they were like, now this guy, he has not even become the president and is making enemies with other countries. What will happen if he ascends to power? I think, uh, and this added to the argument that William Ruto's uh, position, as long as the, inter, uh, the foreign policy is concerned, is really one thing. It is time to correct this. There were several arguments that he has not traveled outside uh, Africa. Now he is going to travel abroad. So it is a moment to answer his political opponents and to answer all these allegations in action. I know he's preparing well so that when he gives, when he addresses Commonwealth, when he addresses Kenyans in ab abroad, when he answers questions, he must score because Kenyans will be watching whatever he says. If he slips, because see, once you say something, you cannot take it back. You cannot take something that you have verbally said. So I know every Kenya is wishing William Ruto well. It was just a short video to show just how, what a moment for William Ruto, it came at a better time for him. Guys, if you're watching this video for the very first time, I want to request you to subscribe because this channel is still a very young channel. I just started and it can only grow if you give me that necessary support by subscribing, sharing my videos, giving me that uh, thumbs up. To those who have already subscribed from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you very much. Please add more friends, give me more friends to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the notification button so that when we do another video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. I get a lot of feedbacks. I still, uh, people still tell me that I'm dark and my camera does not really give uh, the correct color, it is dull. We are working on something to get a better camera. Uh, people told me about my background. I've changed this background. No, it, though it is not the best, but I've changed the background. They were talking about the quality of the sound. Uh, at least uh, there are no uh, there's no there are no kids crying around saying that dead because I was doing it 
in the house now i think it's a bit quiet compared to the uh, the other two videos also share your thoughts with me we should keep this uh, this conversation going is there any reason that you think i've left out do you think as a william ruto supporter do you think this invitation is going to score is going to give him some political mileage are you happy where you are that uh, william ruto has been invited as new supporters who are there what do you think what do you make of william ruto's invitation let us keep this conversation going and uh, until we do another video like this thank you very much have uh, a wonderful weekend and a wonderful moment bye